Hey, I'm Coach Dana. I'm Coach Sophie Marin. And we are in Colorado Springs at the 2018 USA Cycling Coaches Summit. It's been a lot of great information this week. Yeah, we heard from a lot of leaders in the industry, psychologists, sports physiologists, nutritionists, weight trainers, former pros, and we wanted to share our top highlights from the weekend and see if we can give you some of that information. So here we go. All right, let's do it. Hey everyone, I heard some great sports nutrition tips over the weekend here at the USAC Coaching Summit. Here's a few takeaways I want to share with you. Uh, one of the first ones that you may or may not know about is uh, the pre-sleep protein ingestion. So we find that there is actually a peak of protein synthesis happening right before bed. So what we want you guys to do is actually um, increase protein ingestion before bed to improve uh, muscle response to training. So what that might look like is consuming 20 to 40 grams of protein. Be sure to combine it with about 15 grams of carbohydrate. Um, and that should help increase muscle mass and strength gains, particularly during the resistance phase of training. Um, another great tip we heard was the idea of building a snack. So instead of just grabbing a carbohydrate or grabbing a piece of fruit, think about always having a carb with a protein or a healthy fat. So an example of this might be an apple with almond butter. Um, the idea is you're getting a fast burn uh, with the carbohydrate and then slow burn with a nice uh, healthy fat or protein. Um, the last tip I want to share with you is uh, the idea of the recovery snack after your rides being the most important meal of the day. That's going to make the most fundamental difference with your training. So the idea here is to combine carbohydrate and protein again in either a two to one ratio or a four to one ratio, depending on your workout, of carbs to protein. Um, that's going to, of course, help with glycogen repletion uh, and quicker recovery, but also it's shown to improve protein synthesis and building, rebuilding of that muscle by six times. So again, that post-race, post-ride recovery nutrition is key. Thanks. Right, another presentation we had was tips uh, for altitude training and racing, and it was by Dr. Ann Friedlander of Stanford University. And a couple of the uh, key takeaway tips that we felt were, number one is recognize that your VO2 decreases um, at altitude, and it's around 3% for every 1,000 feet over 5,000 feet. So, you know, you can do a little math, keep that in mind. Uh, you want to increase your hydration, that's uh, fairly well known, but it's definitely a good tip. Um, iron supplementation definitely is important, and we were talking in our presentation with Ben Day as well, and that was one thing he really suggested too on a lot of his athletes. It's not big for supplements, but iron supplementation was something key that he said was important. Um, then also allowing longer recovery times, and also when you go into it, uh, increase, uh, take your time on intensity. Don't start right away with high intensity, slowly build. Um, also, increase your antioxidant foods. That doesn't mean taking anti antioxidant supplements. You actually said stay away from that. Just foods with high antioxidants, like berries, other sources that you may find. Um, then as far as if you're going in for an event, you wanna get in quickly and then get out, or at least give yourself around two weeks to, of adaptation time before the event. One. We had a fantastic discussion with Dr. Stacy Sims uh, discussing how women are not men and how that applies to training. So we took a look at the different phases of the menstrual cycle for women and saw how that will affect your performance. Um, we also discussed how to train and fuel according to your cycle. And while this is complex stuff, I will try to simplify it as best I can. Um, something that was noteworthy in uh, Dr. Sims's discussion was that research has shown that oral contraceptives are very problematic for performance. In fact, one study found 11% performance drop for regularly fit women who are taking uh, oral contraceptives. So um, it's actually, uh, we suggest, or she suggests rather, having an IUD or a mini pill that's going to serve you better in terms of sport performance. Uh, the other thing is we do want women to have regular menstruation um, when they are athletes uh, for your overall health and improved performance. Another thing with uh, thinking about menstrual cycle and tracking that to understand your performance is that uh, there are big changes during the high hormone phase of your cycle. So that would be the luteal phase or around day 14. 
So during that high hormone phase of your cycle, that can result in a drop of FTP by eight to 10 watts lower than usual. The other thing is your five minute power can be about 10% lower than usual. So during that phase of your cycle, again, day 14, luteal phase, we need to make interventions to make sure that you're having success in the sport and continuing to grow. Here are the key tips. Increase your BCA, so uh, branch chain amino acids, up that. Another thing, you are going to need to increase carbohydrate and glucose significantly, so we do not want you under eating during that phase. Um, for exercise, we, she recommends taking glucose tablets. The other thing, protein, keeping your protein intake high, thinking about timing. Uh, we want at least 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram of your body weight. So that's a little bit more than what the standard uh, discussion is. The last couple of things here, um, your training, you're gonna have a lower FTP during that high hormone phase around day 14, luteal phase. So you wanna drop that a little bit in terms of your training so you're not overtraining. And the last thing is keeping hydration up. Uh, we hope this helps, thanks. All right, I'm here with Ben Day, former pro. Uh, founder of Day by Day Coaching and current high performance coach of Mitchelton Scott uh, World Tour team. Great to have you, thanks for stepping in here. Um, he did a presentation yesterday, uh, it was one of our favorite ones. Uh, it was called A Focus on Performance Lessons Learned from the Pros. Have you been saying that to everybody? That was your favorite one? Uh, maybe. Just making sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. I knew it. <laughs> um, you know, he shared lots of really great information and just gonna ask him two questions. Um, put you on the spot here. So number one, what are the top attributes of a pro cyclist uh, that can help them succeed? The pro cyclists, when we get them, they're already so strong, they're already so talented physiologically, like otherwise they wouldn't be at that level. But we need a, a sense of resilience with these athletes, and I've seen some guys come through, and they're amazingly talented. You see numbers, you see the data on these guys, and it just blows you away. Like they should be winning everything, but. They don't survive. Like they don't have this resiliency to um, deal with all the curveballs of, of being in Europe. Um, talking about the European peloton here, uh, dealing with a new environment, dealing with all that life stuff that comes around it as well. Because like if all those things aren't in, in place, they're never going to get the top performances out. And I've seen such talented guys at like the age of 23, the age of 24, just amazing numbers, get no results not have this ability to, to push through this, these situations and then we, we lose them to the sport. And what, as, as a coach, what's your most important role with those top level athletes? Yeah, so it's guidance, right? So like, um, it's rare that I'll ever dictate to my athletes because, you know, one, they know a lot of what's going on already, but I, I have to really be aware of, of who they are, the things that they're, they're dealing with. Um, and sometimes like it can be this mental side of things where I can work on mental training to improve some of this resiliency. Okay. Some of this is circumstance because they've come through the system in a certain way to get to where they are. So that might have built in a bit of resiliency. It might be in their genes from like uh, as they sort of grew up in whatever environment that they were in. Um, but then other guys, like they've come through it and it's been such a, a clean, easy pathway. Sometimes when it's that easy, and maybe they were that good when they were young, they don't have that resiliency to take their career to you know, that long 10 years, 15 years of, of racing. Okay, okay. All right, what are some of the common pitfalls that you see that have hindered riders' advancement in the sport from maybe at the low level and then also to the high level? Get a coach. Okay. okay. <laughs> Bad coaching, you yeah. know. Okay. Um, especially coming into these earlier levels, you have to keep an eye on what development truly is. and. Depending on their age, it might mean that you need a different stimulus at that point, and a certain amount of structure. Like with, with, with younger athletes, it's important not to have too much structure there. Keep them motivated, keep them enjoyed in the sport, mm -hmm. and keep them getting out there. We want to keep them in there for that longevity, okay. and that, that's that way we'll actually get them into maybe a professional career if they have that sort of talent. Okay. Um, as you sort of move up through the ranks. Um, I see a lot of people chasing after extreme ideas and taking them to the max and losing the fundamentals of, of building that physiology in the first place. So like aerobic conditioning, um, balancing that out with a good anaerobic engine as well, um, keeping those in balance all, all the time is really important. Um, you know, having a good understanding of nutrition, um, sometimes the mental training stuff can be a component that they need to, to be aware of, tactics are something that, that are important too, so that, that's all the different parts of performance. That, these guys need to, to be aware of. Um, so it's just going to change depending on you know what they're dealing with. Okay. Well, great.
Well, thank you very much. Thanks for the time, and all the best this year. We'll be watching you. Thank you. Okay.